Hello everybody and welcome and as we all know Inkscape is a very useful tool and one of the things which I use for quite a lot is to make thumbnails so in this video I thought I'd walk you through one way which we can easily use Inkscape to make thumbnails for YouTube. So let's get started shall we? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to YouTube website to see how big my thumbnail ought to be. Here we are at the YouTube website and I see that it's recommended that the thumbnails ought to be 1280 by 720. So let's go to File, Document Properties and set it. First of all, let's put it in landscape mode. 1280 Seven, seven twenty, and we don't want that in millimeters. <laughs> we want that in pixels. That's a whole different story. Okay. Next, let's add a layer. Let's rename this layer to background. And I'm going to put in a rectangle using my fill and stroke dialog I remove the stroke and I change the color to a nice dark blue something like that okay let's move this so it takes up the whole page I have snapping on we can change our snap settings up here Right now I have bounding boxes on and nodes, but I'm just going to remove uh, nodes. So they only have bounding boxes on. I can go to advanced mode and make sure that page borders are also selected. And in this way, okay, let's save our file. I'm gonna call my file thumbnail that SVG. Okay, so here we have the background layer and we are going to lock it so that uh, we don't accidentally interfere with it again. And I'm going to add another layer. And I'm gonna call this layer text. And in fact, I don't really like seeing each object. So I'm going to switch to layers only view. So I've got a background layer and a text layer. Let's add some text and let's type making thumbnails in Inkscape. Good. Okay. So here we have a very simple text and it's not the thing about thumbnails is that you need to call attention to people which is kind of one of the most annoying things about youtube i mean don't get me wrong you know i do love youtube but because all of the thumbnails is super loud and is screaming for your attention and if you don't do it your boring thumbnail will not get noticed at all so in order to make this text pop a bit more First of all, we're going to make it thicker and we're also going to make it bigger. So I'm going to go back to my text and I'm going to just select this and press Ctrl A to select all. And I'm going to change the font and I'm going to pick Arial Black, which is nice and thick. I can also set the font size up here. But because it's easier to size it so that it fits the thumbnail, I'm going to just uh, resize it using the selection tool. And I'm holding down control so that the aspect ratio remains constant. And now I have a very nice text. It's still a bit big. So it's just a little bit smaller. Okay. Now it's black and it's a dark background, so it's still not that visible. 
So I'm going to make it a different color. And I can do that using the fill and stroke dialog. Change the fill to something like this. Next, I would like to add a shadow. One way to do that is just to press Ctrl D, two of these, as you can see. The one I currently have selected, I'm moving it to the bottom and I'm gonna change the color to black. And then I'm just gonna use the arrow keys. Oh, it's not working. Now I'm gonna select the top text. I use the arrow keys to move it up a bit. So that's a quick and dirty way to add a shadow. If you want, you can also blur the shadow. Change its color and play around with that and see until you get something that you like. Another thing you can do, for example, let me add a bit more text. Another thing you can do is you can just go to filters, shadows and glows, and you can add a drop shadow like that. Or oh, one more thing you can do, let me just change the color first, is give this text an outline. So in order to give the text an outline is first I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to path, object to path, and that converts this text into strokes and fills, as you can see, with lots of little nodes over there. So I'm going to select all these objects and I'm going to give it a stroke. For example, a black stroke. Here I can change the width of my stroke and I can change the color of my stroke too if I want a different color like maybe the same red as this one oops okay next I want to add a picture of my own ugly face in like a super dramatic pose so i'm gonna go to my webcam and i'm gonna make a super dramatic face watch this like i didn't know it was that easy like super annoying or another pose you could do is like the super arrogant pretentious thoughtful one like this or the worst one is like this Or something like that. Uh, I'll stick with this one. Okay, so now that I've taken the picture, I'm gonna go find it in my uh, desktop. And I'm gonna take my pretentious picture and I'm gonna put it on. I'm going to just drag and drop it into Inkscape to import it. And what I want to do now is I want to cut out this background. So I'm going to go to my Bezier Curves tool. You can do this in GIMP too, but uh, it's a bit faster just to do it in Inkscape. So I'm going to, I don't know, should I include the mic or not? Let's say I keep the mic, see what happens. I can always remove it later. using the good old Bezier curve tool. Remember that if you want to add a curve, you can always just click and drag. Although I personally prefer to add straight lines and then add the curves in later.
Okay, let me just quickly adjust this. I can, by the way, you can, you can hold control and click to add these curves as a shortcut. Yeah, like this. Doesn't need to be perfect, just good enough. Remember, perfect is the enemy of good. And I have better things to do with my life than to mess about with these curves all day. Okay, good enough like that, right? Da -da -da. Okay, now I have my shape. Let me just, uh, because it's a bit easier to see what's going on, I'm going to give it a quick fill. And I'm going to make it transparent. Uh, and I want to duplicate this fill because I'm going to use it later. Control D. And the duplicate I'm just going to put over here for now. Now I'm going to select my shape and I'm going to select my picture and I'm going to go to object, clip, set. And that basically cuts out the background from my uh, thumbnail. And now what I see a lot of other people doing on YouTube is they have this weird white outline. So I'm going to move my shape back in front. And I'm going to remove the fill and keep only the stroke. And the stroke, I'm going to set it to white and increase the width. That's a pretty good way of calling attention to your... It increases the contrast of your image and that uh, draws more attention to your thumbnail. Okay. I see the ear is just a bit messed up, so I'm just going to make some minor adjustments to the ear. Okay, nice. Let's select them both and then just control G to uh, group them together. And then I'm going to increase the size of it and move it down here. So remember, what I cut off over here, it's not going to show. So it doesn't matter that there's a little bit off the side of the page. When I export it, that stuff is going to get cut out. I should actually be doing this on another layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, Control X, I go to another layer, lock this one, new layer, uh, picture. And then edit, paste in place. So that's an exact same place as it was before. Okay. Okay, so next I just had a little brainwave. Normally I would have a little picture here or some icons here, or maybe a screenshot of myself working. But I thought for this video, I would do a little bit of a special effect. I would do a recursion effect. So first of all, I'm going to take this, this and this and, and I'm going to unlock them. And then I'm going to select everything and Control C, create a new layer. Uh, and I'm going to just call it, I don't know what to call it. Let's call it picture two for lack of a better word. Add, put it in the top, lock everything again and then Control Paste. And here we have, uh, let's hide the effect, let's hide the other layers as well so we won't get distracted by it. Okay, now I want another picture, another rectangle. Let's set the fill to a transparent yellow and let's remove the stroke and let's make the rectangle the exact same size as this. And I'm going to use this rectangle twice. Now first of all, I'm going to use it to cut this part out. And second of all, I'm going to use it to make a shadow. So let me select Control D to duplicate, Object Clip set and on this one I'm going to move all the way to the back and I'm going to 
make it black and I'm going to make it fully opaque and I'm going to use oh, I'm in the wrong okay and I'm going to select this this, this, this and this and I'm going to move it up let me just zoom in a bit Control and mouse wheel zooms. Okay, zooming out again. And a pretty big blur. And now I'm gonna select everything and control G. And I go back and unhide these pictures. Hold on control. This should be the top, and I should be in this layer right now. No, I'm not. Drugs. There we go. Ah, now I know what to call it. I'm gonna call it level two. Level two of my recursion effect. And then I'm going to do control C add another layer called level pre and move that to the top i'm gonna add them as well oh i'm in the wrong layer again for some reason it's not copying to the right layer let's just drag and drop it better okay the text should be down here not that it really matters and one more level why not let's just right click duplicate layer and rename level four and then beautiful we could go on even more but obviously we won't be able to see it nobody will be able to see it anymore okay okay so finally what we want to do is we want to export it to png so to do that it's quite easy we just go to file export and in this case we want to export the page and that automatically sets the width and the height then we can simply click on export and there you're done okay and that's it from me for now thanks a lot hope you learned something have a good one bye bye